It was announced that it would produce 1 million units per year on a 65-inch basis. How is QD OLED different from LG's white OLED? And why did they choose QD OLED rather than the same white OLED as LG? The response of Samsung Electronics has not been very favorable yet. So why? Will Samsung display strategy be successful? To approach the answer to the above question, it is essential to understand the basic structure of white OLED. We'll cover this issue in today's video. All right, let's go on a tech trip. Both LCD and OLED TVs, which are currently mainstream, use glass as a substrate in common, regardless of size, resolution, or backlight. About 100 million red, green, blue cell pixels are formed on the panel, and they are individually driven to compose the screen. Driving each pixel means adjusting the brightness as well as turning the pixel on and off. For this operation, transistors and capacitors that act as a switch are installed in each sub-pixel. In the case of OLED, unlike LCD, since the brightness is adjusted by adjusting the amount of quarant, the structure of the circuit part is complicated, and the area occupied within the sub-pixel is relatively larger than that of the voltage-driven LCD. As a result, the area through which light can pass in one cell pixel or pixel becomes relatively small. The ratio of the area where light is emitted to the pixel area is called the aperture ratio. After all, it can be said that the OLED has a low aperture ratio. The difference between a panel with a high aperture ratio and a panel with a low aperture ratio causes a difference in screen brightness as seen in animation. In order for a panel with a low aperture ratio to realize a screen with the same brightness level, the same number of electrons injected into a larger area must be injected into the small area of the light emitting area. As a result, the light emitting area is overused by the high quarant density. As a result, the panel life will be reduced. This again results in burning occurring quickly. Now let's take a closer look at the saw pixel structure of white OLED. Because understanding it gives us a clue as to why Samsung is trying QD OLED. To avoid complexity, I will explain with one green cell pixel instead of 100 million cell pixels. For both LCD and OLED, the first process of manufacturing a display panel is to form a circuit composed of transistors and capacitors that act as switches on a glass substrate. The second process is to form a color filter layer to extract only green light by filtering white light. When ITO, which acts as a transparent electrode, is formed on top of the color filter, the front-end process of the substrate is completed. Next, organic materials composed of about 20 layers and the aluminum castle that injects electrons are deposited. I think you have understood the structure of white OLED to some extent. And now let's look at the problems of white OLED. As a company other than LG Display, it is patents that block the commercialization of white OLED. At the time, I thought that paying $100 million for purchasing patents was a huge money. But looking back now, it was a very good deal. Among them, 
The representative patent includes a very strong patent that provides a method of composing RGB or pixels using an OLED device that emits white light while including three or more light emitting layers and connecting units in the middle of the device. Since the main patent expires in year 2025, maybe from that time, some companies will be able to produce white OLED TV panel relatively freely if they want. The main reason why Samsung is trying QD OLED is that it can freely implement 8K resolution on a small size panel other than the patent issue. Conversely, the white OLED method also means that it is not easy to implement 8K resolution on a small size panel. The reason lies in the approach ratio described above. In the case of white OLED, since it is a quarant driven method, the circuit is composed of quite a number of components. As a result, the approach ratio becomes smaller and in the case of a 4K resolution 65-inch OLED TV, the approach ratio is known to be around 50%. If this is upgraded to 8K, the approach ratio will not be maintained, but will become much smaller. The area occupied by the socket does not decrease in proportion to the pixel size, but because there are areas that are occupied by default. This is the reason why OLED TVs have been commercialized from 55 inch, but 8K TVs are only commercialized over 80 inch. And for the same reason, 65 inch rollable TVs, which cost hundreds thousand dollars, are commercialized only in 4K, not 8K. Now let's look at the structure of QD OLED and compare it with white OLED to see why Samsung is pushing to commercialize in QD OLED instead of white OLED. The first thing to notice is that the direction in which the light comes out is opposite to that of the white OLED. Since the light is emitted in the opposite direction rather than the direction in which the socket part is located, the reduction in the approach ratio can be avoided. In other words, the area where light is emitted from the panel has a relatively large advantage of white OLED. It is a technology that is already being applied to maximize the approach ratio in OLED for mobile phones whose pixel size is much smaller than that of a TV. This method is called the top emission method, and all OLED used in mobile phones adopt the top emission method. QD OLED can show two advantages by applying top emission method with high approach ratio. It is much easier to implement 8K resolution, even with a small panel size, and it is possible to realize the same lifetime by setting the panel brightness higher than that of white OLED. White OLED TVs has half the brightness setting compared to LCD, but the difference can be overcome to some extent by applying top emission technology. Other advantages of QD OLED is its excellent color reproduction ability. White OLED implements RGB colors by filtering white light with the color filters. However, it is difficult to obtain sharp spectrum due to limitation of color filter. On the other hand, QD OLED uses blue light and converts it into sharp red and green with high efficiency using quantum dust, so it has the advantage of realizing high electrical efficiency and excellent color gamma. QD OLED does not use white light but uses blue light and converts it into green and red, so it has the advantage of being free from the aforementioned Kodak patterns. But there are not only good points. As seen from this structure, price increase is inevitable by adopting a top emission method that has a rather complicated structure and low yield compared to that of simple white OLED. 
White already itself has been cited as a disadvantage in terms of its high production price compared to existing LCDs. In a situation where it is clear that the price of QD OLED will be more expensive than that of white OLED, how the market will accept the advent of QD OLED is of great interest. This is probably Samsung's concern. QD OLED TV will be released early next year, so let's keep an eye. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away, yeah, 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 yeah. As you fade away